Well, hello everyone, and happy Valentine's Day. Well, if you're watching this on Valentine's Day, I hope it's a happy one. And even if it's not Valentine's Day, you know, we could still use some love in our lives, and I hope it's a good day for you nonetheless. Today, we are taking a look at Cosplay Convention Crisis. It's a visual novel being developed by Midnight Hearts. The game is still in development, so this is just the demo of the game. But looking at the game, I see that it's about a bunch of people having fun at an anime convention, dressing up as their favorite characters. And one of those characters that they're dressed up as, well, that's one of my buddy's waifus. So that was enough to get me to play the game. The other part was the price. It can't be free. So we are going to just jump into the game and start playing. Now, I should probably mention that the game is not finished, but it has already met all of its, um, what do you call it, Kickstarter goals. So it is set to be released in September of 2021. But I'll try to link to it in the bottom so you guys can go and show the developers some love. Alright, Cosplay Convention Crisis contains themes that are adult in nature. Are you of sexually legal age in your country of residence? Why, yes, yes I am. I don't really know how mature or adult this game is going to be. I expecting it I'm expecting it more to be kind of goofy. But if necessary, I will take the proper precautions. Alright, the following game is a product of Studio Midnight Hearts. The demo is not representative of the final game. It's a preview build. Any non-original characters referenced are copyright of their original creator and are only included in the basis of parody. Now, this is a demo. I don't know exactly how long the game is going to go, but I'm hoping to do the entire demo in just one video, but we'll see what happens. On Sunday, October 23rd, Jacob Kirby died at the age of 21. Jacob Kirby, of course, being a reference to the iconic, the famous, the incomparable Jack Kirby, whose work in the comic book industry if we lack that, there wouldn't be a comic book industry. All right. The way he died would have been completely unpredictable just a few days prior. While in the middle of a massive dispute, a beam of focused light energy struck him in the heart. Yeah, that would do it. At the moment of contact, it blew a hole in one end and out of the other. Jacob was dead in seconds. Well, at least it was quick. His body crumpled like a house with its foundations pulled out. The last thing he would see was the sympathetic eyes of his killer staring down at him. Perhaps if Jacob Kirby had made different decisions in his life, he wouldn't have ended up in this situation. Perhaps Jacob Kirby might have lived to see his 22nd birthday. Perhaps Kantan wouldn't have been the last convention he would ever get to attend. But maybe there was no way Jack Kirby could have avoided no way Jacob Kirby <laughs> could have avoided such a heartless end. That's a pun. That's a pun. That's Maybe from the moment he met his killer, it was destiny that she would be the one to kill him. Perhaps. Maybe. Perhaps. Maybe. Life is strange that way. Alright, present day. Thursday, October 20th. Morning. I was one of the first people on the back of the bus. I walked to the back and claimed the center seat where everyone probably expected me to sit. My name is Jacob Kirby, and today is Thursday, October 20th, the first day of Kantan. The right side of the bus was being taken up by the comic club, the left side of the, the left side by the anime society, which meant that as the only member of both clubs, I probably had to take the one middle seat. The other students filled into one side or the other, they barely looked at one another. Fun fact, at my school, the anime society and the comic club hated one another, what a burning passion. Yes, there are no greater enemies in nature than comic book nerds and anime nerds. Which is why it was amusing this year Kantan, the local anime convention, was joining up with Cape City, the local comic book convention. 
and it was doubly amusing that the school metro only lent us one bus. I went over my bag one last time. Badge? Check. Outfits? Check. Food so I didn't have to pay the outrageous food court prices? Check and check. Yeah, those food prices can get up there pretty quick. I smiled. No boring classes. No life-sucking part-time job. No obnoxious, fan no obnoxious fantasy football-obsessed roommate. This is going to be a great weekend. I hope so, buddy. I should probably play with some of these buttons, see what they do. I'm guessing menu. Yep. Uh, let's save the game real quick. Okay. Maybe load and save and load. I'm guessing that's kind of skipping stuff. What about this little H here? Ah, hide. So we can look at stuff. A girl in boyish clothes threw her backpack into the seat opposite of mine and sat down. I gave a half wave. If it was in my backpack the entire time, then I didn't lose it, Amanda. If I had lost it, I wouldn't actually have had it. If you didn't have it around your neck and you weren't able to get into the con, I'm pretty sure that's called losing it. Amanda had been my neighbor in elementary school, so she's the childhood friend. Middle school, high school, and I guess we also went to the same college now. She had learned how to... I should put it frequently, tolerate me. Are you going to tell me that cosplay... <clears throat> Are you going to tell me what cosplay you actually brought yet? You'll just have to wait and see. Tell me this much. Did you bring any female characters this time? In my entire life, I had, I swear to God, only seen her really cosplay as a female character twice. Alright. Once it was Damon... Demino from Y People. Yeah. And the other time is Illuminant from Final Fantasy 13. Yeah, sure. Both of whom look rather androgynous. This has been something of a pattern with Amanda for a while. Her only sport was intramural frisbee. I had literally never seen her in a dress before. She actually wore a tux to high school prom. Alright, she's one of, What do you call... The Japanese term for that. I'm forgetting what it's called. It's like a, um... Type of actress. But it surprise you to know that I did bring a female character this time? Not if she had short hair and dresses gender neutral. Does she have short hair and dress gender neutral? Are you going to be cosplaying anything this year? Yep, but if you aren't telling me what you brought, well then fair is fair. Amanda grunted and recrossed her arms. Before the conversation could go anywhere else, another familiar face stepped into view. A sweet, familiar, devilish face. Oh, the seat next to you is open. Ah, Makoto Mine. I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. Approached us with her usual playful grin. Amanda's brow immediately furrowed into a glare. See? She's glaring. Makoto. Hey, Makoto. Amanda's voice was daggers. Meanwhile, my meanwhile, went down two octaves. Makoto seemed oblivious. Her smile was unshakable. Makoto Mine was an international student from Kyushu, Japan. But you wouldn't tell that from her accent. Her English, totally flawless. I met her for the first time at the beginning of the year in Anime Society. From minute one, she made my head spin. For some reason, she was all over me. Touches, glances, everything. It was something of a dilemma. On one hand, on one hand, what straight man hates affection from a hot girl? On the other hand, Makoto, definitely on the crazy side of the hot crazy scale. And then there was the incident. Oh boy, all right, two weeks ago. I spent the better part of the Attack on Cyclops movie holding my bladder. That's a good start. I could have gone to the bathroom and missed part of it. At the same time, staying and squirming had seemed a better option. It was not the better option. A few seconds later, after I flushed, I heard a sound at the bathroom door. 
They're still collecting my bearings. I figured it was just another guy coming in. Probably someone else from Anime Club. What I would have been out of my mind to expect was the door next to my stall being slammed open. You could say I was caught my pants down by this turn of events. Oh, hello. So that's where you were hiding. You had me worry you would leave before we could spend any time together. Makoto was standing there in the bathroom, looking into my stall. There was no illusion that this was an innocent prank. Hell, she'd even taken off her shirt. Why had she taken off her shirt? My eyes were caught by her creamy pale breasts. Why had she taken off her shirt? After I managed to put my brain back together, first thing I did was cover up. She must have had a solid five seconds of watching my exposed, oh, hello, before I could even stop her. Oh, you don't need to do that. I was liking the view. But Makoto, what are you doing? She took a step forward. The gap between us was closing. Her eyes were hungry. It was something I'd never quite seen in a woman before in my entire life. Just relax for a second, Jacob. I know you must be pretty confused right now, but if you just close your eyes, I can make you feel really, really good. She was blushing slightly. By comparison, my cheeks were probably stopped light red. I've been told I'm very good at it, you know. Making men feel good. I can make you feel good, too. Now, I figured there'd be some of this in here. I'm hoping it stays kind of PG and silly. Just close your eyes. Close them tight and relax. I was paralyzed. Totally paralyzed. Her body was so close to me, and she was only getting closer and closer to me by the second. I didn't know what to do. This was wrong, wasn't it? Her busting in like this? Part of me just wanted to let this happen. Uh, look, Makoto, this is, um, this is pretty weird. Can we take a second and just slow down, talk through this? But Makoto didn't seem to be in a mood to talk through anything. She looked hungry, her lips parted, drawing closer for a kiss. It would be so easy just... No, no, this is too weird. No, we're not doing this. You shouldn't be in here. You need to go. I rose to my feet now. My position was sol solidifying. How would she thought this was okay? Did she think she could just ambush me on the toilet? Go now. That did the trick. Makoto's face sunk into a strange frown. I could almost see the gears in her head spinning. I matched my eyes to her. It was easier to keep my resolve than I had looked down at her exposed. Okay, I'll see you next week, Jacob. Toodles. And just like that, she threw her shirt over her shoulders and just walked out the soul. It was like for her, none of that really happened. It was all nothing but a game. Makoto was true to her word. She showed up next week at Anime Society, pretending that none of this had ever happened. I suppose it was easier for me to try to pretend it didn't happen, too. Makoto slid into the seat next to me and curled up, in, and curled up into it like a cat who had found a warm lap. Oh, she was grinning, too. That was always a good sign. There are other open seats around. Don't you think you could take one more near Anime Club members? Makoto giggled. Amanda's glare didn't give her an inch. Why? I like the back of the bus. And there's such a great company here. You're not good at taking hints, are you? Amanda knew, of course. I told her practically an hour after it had ever happened. At the time, she implied that I should have tried to sue her for sexual assault. She very strongly implied it. Well, I'm not sitting next to you, am I? I think Jacob should be the one to decide if I sit with him or not. You notice I'm sitting next to him, and not next to you. Kofta turned to me with a prayer gesture and big round kitten eyes. 
Do you want me to go, Jacob? Do you? Let's hear it, Jacob. You want Makoto to go. I sighed. Maybe it would be better to send her away. Deep down, I had calm, calmed down about the whole incident. It's not like I would have mind having her throw herself on me for the entire ride too much. She probably just liked me, but didn't know how to express herself right. Though if I let her stay, Amanda would probably spend the entire time glaring at her. And probably at me too. Amanda can get a bit catty when she was mad. Perhaps it would be better to consider her feelings. Okay, should we stay or should we go now? If we go, there will be trouble. If we stay, it's gonna be double. Um... Hmm... I think for the safety of the bus ride, we will ask her to go. And we got... I guess we have five points with Amanda. I'm sorry, Makoto, but Amanda seems a bit stressed right now. In truth, having this excuse was a relief. I was still far from certain about my thoughts on Makoto. Just how mad should I be about the bathroom incident? I mean, I was appalled at the time, but I've replayed the incident too many times in my head since then. Questions of how much I hated it could be forestalled with a bit more room. Stressed. Sure. That's the word. Do you mind out if we hang out a bit later during the con? I tried my best to smile. I tried my best not to hurt her. Still, Makoto looked like a puppy that had just been abandoned. It's all an act. She's trying to trick you. She paused briefly, then swallowed. I understand. That's alright. I'll see you later, okay, cutie? Sure. Catch you later, Makoto. Makoto walked towards the front of the bus, blowing me a kiss. It took a second to even realize what she'd call me. Also, don't call me cutie. Seriously, don't. Amanda just scoffed at my side. She was having a good time with this. From time to time, Amanda could get just a bit smug in victory. I thought we'd need a crowbar to detach her from you. She's not that bad, Amanda. She's just new here and lonely. Even as I said it, I remembered the discomfort of the confrontation in the bathroom. She tried to... In the bathroom stall, and you're acting like you're great friends. I can't stop you from being stupid, but I don't have to approve. A hand peeked over the top of the seats and waved back at me. Makoto's probably. I ducked lower into my seat. God, let Amanda not have noticed that. I mean, I don't know if that would have been... I mean, I was surprised and all. Amanda gave me a look. That one, are you kidding me expression that it sometimes seems to be like every girl is mastered. I sighed at her. Did she really not get it? As a result, I was about to say something very stupid. Oh, come on. You like girls, right? I mean, just an assumption, since you've never told me. She's cute, a bit in your face, but she's got a really great figure. Besides, the way she's into me is occasionally charming. Just occasionally, though. Jacob, you said everything wrong. The minute I even brought up her sexuality, Amanda gave me a brutal side eye. Amanda doesn't really talk about sex with anyone. It's a well-known joke in comic club that she's probably a... Well, that she's probably not too interested in manly affection, so to speak. Seeing her face, I made the realization immediately. This was not something that should have come out of my mouth. My next move was to try to add anything to my sentence that might save me. Uh, tell me you don't see it too. She's really hot, okay? Amanda just rolled her eyes. What makes you assume I like girls? You know I just don't like to talk about private things like that. There's some parts of my life I just don't want anyone knowing about. Well, um... In truth, 
I actually didn't have any proof of the matter. Some choice glances, maybe a tab or two I noticed on her laptop over the years. There's some things a person can hide, but nothing this big. Still, how would Amanda react to being called out on it? Maybe in a situation like this it would be better to apologize. Yeah, yeah, just admit that you were an idiot. Look, I decided I really shouldn't press the point home. At the end of the day, Amanda was my friend. She was someone important to me. If she didn't want to talk about it, then respecting her would be the right thing to do. I'm sorry I even brought it up. You're right. You can like men, women, whoever, and it's only my business if you want it to be. Still, you shouldn't give Makoto too much shit about the bathroom thing. I honestly still don't really know how I feel about it. Amanda's face went blank. And then, in a very quiet voice, she offered a short reply. Huh. Thank you. She turned her face away from me. Amanda was really easy to make blush if you knew how. And I knew how. Not to mention she was terrible at hiding it. At least from me. Some time passed while neither of us spoke. Our minds were in other places. I was still going over that last exchange in my head. Had I said the right thing there? Amanda, though. Do you remember our first con together? Uh, was that Diamond City Comic Con? I scratched my head. It had to be, right? That was the first time we went through at any of our parents. I'm talking earlier. My dad took Xavier and us to his old star travel conventions. Yeah, kind of. It was a while ago. Are you sure you want to talk about this? I looked around nervously. This wasn't a topic we normally touched. Amanda hadn't even so much as mentioned her father's existence in more than a year. It was the taboo of taboos for her. You know, I don't really care about star travel that much. But even back then... Seeing all those people have fun in costume, it was incredible. It's like a small city they created just for themselves. They could be whoever they wanted to be. They could be themselves. Or maybe they could be someone else entirely. They could be anything. Isn't that incredible? And you know, to be honest with you, that is kind of a big part of the fun of going to these costume conventions and stuff. It's, uh, it's being able to show your passion for these characters, or these concepts, or these worlds, and just have fun expressing yourself. I smiled. Yeah, it's freaking magic. Any further discussion on the matter was stepped out by a cheer running down the length of the bus. I think we're here. Oh, the convention center's folks, African aesthetics, and general Serengeti theme were visible in the decorations that lined the jungle parking lot. The truth is, the convention center was more of a hotel than anything. A kitschy resort for families to bring their kids to. But the fact that it was attached to a sprawling convention building made it an ideal site for a con of this size. You're in room 302, right? Yeah, I have something to say about that. I have something to say about this convention center. Maybe we'll get a uh, picture of it soon. As Amanda asked that, there was a ruffled sound up front. I tried to peek over to see what it was, but couldn't find anything. I think so. Just let me grab my badge. Alright, I reached into my bag and grabbed my entrance pass. It also had my room key and... Where did I put you? Amanda looked on somewhere between amusement and horror. No, 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 no. The thought of losing my key card twice in a row was too much to bear. I'd never hear the end of it. Then I had an idea. I reached into my back pocket. Here it is, yeah, 302. Jesus, you almost gave me a heart attack. Well, anyway, I'm in 304, just a few doors down. When you're ready to go, come over so we can decide what to do during the different time slots. Yeah, sounds like a plan to me. The bus rolled to a stop in front of a hotel portion of the building. Students began filling off the bus, eager to get on with it. Ready? She rose from her seat and extended a hand to me. I used it to pull myself up. 
Oh yeah, this is the vacation I deserved all year. Okay, so here's the hotel room. Unfortunately, we can't point and click around and check out the goodies. But actually, if we hit hide... Now, can I get back without, like, skipping anything? I don't know. Doesn't look like it. Neither of my roommates had shown up yet. Naturally, I used this golden opportunity to claim one of the beds for myself and began unpacking. Which I'm guessing is this one right here. Thursday was normally a short day, but I did have a cosplay planned. I got into my suit. My eyes are drawn to a unique feature of the room. Is that a portrait of a gorilla? Why is that even here? Ah, oh, the gorilla portrait had eyes that followed you around the room like those old Uncle Sam posters. They stared down at my undressed body, ominously. This hotel was totally weird. Why was this thing even here? I tried to throw on my outfit in a hurry. Amanda was still waiting for me in room 304 after all. But before I could even leave, there was a knock on the door. Uh, hello? I got tired of waiting. Someone was being a girl about getting dressed. So there's Amanda. And she is totally dressed up as Guy Gardner. Got tired of waiting. Yep, I read that. Yeah, sorry about how long it took. I was in a staring contest with a gorilla. What? I pointed out the strangely ominous gorilla painting for her. Amanda just seemed to find my reaction kind of funny. I've seen weirder shit than that. Nothing phases me anymore. We're going. Panels are already starting. Amanda was already running off towards the hallway before I could agree. I grabbed my backpack and my keycard before following after her. Alright, I don't know if we're going to get a look at the outside of the convention center, but I'm just going to come out and say it. This is totally the Sandusky, Ohio, Colossal Con convention. I've been there a few times, and the way they're describing it, is exactly the way the building is. It's got this sort of African theme to it, so there's lions and there's elephants and tribal stuff all over the place. Uh, zebras, giraffes, that sort of thing. And the convention center is one thing, but right next to it is all the hotels. It's all the hotels. And a lot of the people either stay at those hotels, but they're expensive, but they are close. And they have this great little water park connected right to it so everybody goes out in their cosplays but in swimsuits so they're like you know Mega Man in a Speedo or you know the Final Fantasy girls in swimsuits that kind of thing but there's also a um I get, I get that. there's the little water park which is nice but there's also like this big like I don't know uh, what's a, it is a water park I just can't think of the right word for it because it's huge it's like this huge indoor like amusement park with water slides and rides and everything. It's actually really nice to visit. I haven't been there in a while, but I would love to go back the next time I have money. Alright, Amanda paused in the hallway, only a few yards away from the hall where all the panels were concentrated. Hey, one more thing about what happened on the bus, just real quick. Well, that sounded serious. I paused to hear her act. What's up? I don't trust Makoto. You were doing such a bad shop job of showing it back on the bus. I don't mean I don't like her, that's fucking obvious. I mean, I think she's lying to you about something. Every word out of her mouth is some kind of manipulation. I keep my distance if I were you. Lies? Why do you think that? And to be honest, I don't know. She just gives me the creeps. Hell, I felt that way even before the bathroom incident. I paused, unsure of how to respond. Amanda's one of the people I trust most. If she really didn't trust someone, I should take it seriously. Still, she really was taking this grudge of hers against Makoto way too far. I don't know, Makoto kind of has those, um, Yandere vibes. You might want to be careful with that. Like the crazy stalker girlfriend. 
Amanda looked down, then she nodded. You say so. I just don't want to deal with your whiny ass when she reveals she's crazy. Afterwards, Amanda went back to ranting about what particular panel she wanted to go to. It was as if that interlude never happened. In fact, that would surprise no one. She rejected outright any of my suspicions for an anime-based panel, even without the slightest bit of consideration. Well, she's the comic book nerd, so, you know, it's <laughs> sacrosy to suggest that she would go to an anime pa panel. Alright, it's not quite lunchtime yet. That means we have to go to either the panel on Marvelous Movie Adaptions, or the interview with the creator of Bane. What do you think? I don't know. Let's go see the Bane dude. Do they have any guests at the Marvelous Movie one? Nah, it was fan submitted. So, tiny projector, PowerPoint presentation. Probably a guy who sucks at public speaking. It kind of sounds like the kind of panel I would do. Amanda shrugged. They could know some about comic book movies, though. You never know, right? Plus, it's not necessarily a guy. The con floor was already packed with activity. Much of it was in front of the registration desk, where a line of people out the door waiting to buy badges. This is why buying badges ahead of time is smart. One second, someone is calling me. Oh god damn it, it's work. What do they want? I raise an eyebrow. Since when did Amanda have a job? Today, you can't be serious. You guys can handle this without me. This is my off weekend. I told you guys way in advance. Yeah, I know it's important, but time away is important too. Do you know how much stress you cause me? She took her phone off her ear for a second and leaned back towards me. Can you go ahead? We can just meet each other in the food court at lunch. Are you sure? Positive. There's no way they're talking to me and coming to work on Kantan weekend. No way in hell. But I need to take this right now. Alright, you have my number, I suppose. I wandered around the hallway looking for something to do. Now that Amanda wasn't here, I considered going to one of the anime panels. But I kept on losing my train of thought. That had been her work calling, right? Amanda had relatively frequent absences and cancellations from social activities, at least over the past two years or so, but I didn't recall her once mentioning any kind of job. I would have to ask her about that at some point. I think saving is probably a good idea. Let's play around with some more of these buttons. Nope, nothing. In the back of my mind, I considered the possibility that I might run into Makoto. If I did, what would, what would happen when it was time to meet up with Amanda for lunch? The incident on the bus wasn't to be repeated. I decided just to go outside for an hour, watch some of the people roll into the con. I might even see a cool cosplay or two. Now there we go, that's the outside of the, the convention and the game. But let me tell you, if you've seen any of the pictures on my Facebook of me at Colossal Con, that is almost like a complete recreation of what the outside of the convention center looks like. I think even the lions were out there. It was nice out. The grass field in front of the entrance made an excellent place to rest in. I wondered idly when the Cash Brothers tournament was going to be. I need to sign up for that. Yeah, there are these, um... I guess big lawns out in front of the convention center. I mean big ones. Some of them are sort of like in the middle of the parking lot. Some of them are sort of to the front or the back of the building. But we would all set up in those yards, those uh, lawns, to do photo shoots. So it was either just you know, general photo shoots or it would be themed. Like for example, maybe it was Marvel characters, maybe it was um, Street Fighter characters whatever it was, and if you were in that costume, you would come out and be part of the photo shoot. And it would be like a big shoot of all of you together, or maybe it would break down into it. So if it was like, say if it was Marvel characters, it'd be like, let's get all the X-Men together. Let's get all the Spider-Man characters together. Let's get all the Avengers characters together. Which was idiotic to say, get all the Avengers characters together. And that's pretty much every Marvel character. But, you know, that's what the kind of stuff was going on. 
All my normal worries were about to be superseded quite soon. I barely noticed at first. A group of three sci-fi cosplayers, one blue girl and two dressed like robots were walking around the grass, holding up some kind of fake scanning device. This appears to be the location specified in the locator, your royal highness. I just closed my eyes and tried to ignore them. What show are they supposed to be from anyway? Is this where the strongest signal was coming from? Negative. We lost that signal, your royal highness. We believe some kind of cloaking technology is the cause. Oh, and they were role-playing their characters. Wonderful. They saw me trying to sleep here, right? And we believe that signal was associated with the culprit, correct? Affirmative. Very well, then. I will speak to the planetary resident who's getting off the weaker signal. I can obtain more information from her. That was the moment I awoke to someone screeching in my face. Hello, Earth resident! Are you alive? Yes? My eyes shot open. The woman in the blue alien costume was standing right above me. They surrounded me, had one of the robot cosplayers flanking me on either side. Um, excuse me, can I help you? Alright, let's hit hide so we can get a good look at the picture. So, there's Blue Alien Girl, and then there's her two... Uh, Gynoids? Lady Robots? Oh, excellent. I didn't think you were dead, but I didn't know if Earth Resident slept, so I had concerns. What is she, exactly? She? What? Why is this woman calling me a she? Someone was fucking with me. Someone must have been fucking with me. Our wreckage indicate that this creature is a human. But where are her breasts? Do humans not have breasts? He. I'm a, I'm a he, a guy. I narrowed my eyes. Hmm. The reports indicated that the human species possesses a gender besides female. They are still in the process of evolving the Y chromosome out of their genetic makeup. Sure. So this is a male human. That's why there aren't any breasts. That is correct, your royal highness. That is so... Interesting. The girl in the blue body paint practically shook with excitement as she said it. Jesus, she was method acting hard. I was getting pretty tired of this shit already. I'm getting a little tired of it too, to be honest. <laughs> now what does this button do? It hides them. Gotcha. Can you tell me what's going on now? Certainly. My name is Tella. I'm assuming that's how to pronounce that. I am the Princess Angestica of Evia. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna go with that. I've come to take you into custody with the intention of extracting information related to a high crime against the people of Avia. Custody, huh? You guys are really cute with your character acting, but would you mind doing it with someone else? This isn't funny. I tried to push my way past them, only for one of the robot cosplayers to suddenly grab my wrists. Before I realized what happened, my wrists were restrained behind my back by something cold and metal. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, I got it right. My gynoids weren't going to let you escape so easily. Come now. I must transport you back to the holding cells. This is officially stopped being funny. Get me out of these things right the fuck now. So, I wouldn't say the language is mature, but there's plenty of us swearing, so there you go. That YouTube's going to love that. I turned around in time to see one of the robot cosplayers opening up. There wasn't a cosplayer inside. Well, that wasn't normal. It looked like it had some internal sensor or something that it was scanning me with. It made a strange beeping noise. It sure didn't look like something a cosplayer could make. This is the first time I seriously entertained the notion that these weirdos might actually be aliens. Look, I swear I have no idea what's going on. Can we please take a second and talk this out? Maybe remove whatever you put on my wrists? I cannot do this, Earth male. The crimes I am investigating are among the most heinous in the history of my planet. You must be brought back for questions. 
I wiggled my hands. No luck. These weren't a pair of cheap handcuffs like you get at a novelty shop in a mall. I wouldn't be able to escape from these without at least bolt cutters or a blowtorch. Do not struggle so much. I'm not trying to harm you, but my gynoid's restraining cuffs are designed to make escape attempts quite painful. Please relax. I did not intend to harm you unless it becomes needed. That distinctly sounded like a threat. Despite my misgivings, I stopped struggling against the cuffs. Your Royal Highness, our scanners have picked up a new signal with the same trace signature as the, original, <laughs> as the original signal inside of the building. Inside of the building? Is the cloaking device they were using down? Likely not. It suggests that the cloaking device was simply not powerful enough to hide the signal from a close radius scan. So then we can find her, yes? Indeed. Excelsior! <laughs> Alright. Tella made a strange, celebratory clicking sound. By this point, I was so confused I couldn't even process it. It was just one more mental indignity on top of the strings of them that I've been that had been the last few minutes. We must move immediately. The dastardly thief shall not escape me again. Wait, wait, what about me? What about... One of us would need to leave you behind to escort the human male back to your ship, your royal highness. My name is Jacob. Stop calling me the human male. To escort Jacob back to the ship. Tella scratched her head. Can we just escort this Jacob with us back into the building? Yes, however there is a risk that Jacob's accomplice might free him. I rolled my eyes. I don't have an accomplice. I wasn't involved in anything. This is bullshit. Tella paused. I paused too. Tella, like from uh, Final Fantasy, that's what I'm thinking. A moment of silence passed between us before she arrived at an answer. Let us take her with us, then. It is quite likely she can at least aid us as a guide inside of the building. Before I could protest, the gynoids reached down and dragged me to my feet. She picked me up in the air as easily with a single hand. Okay, that also didn't seem like something a normal cosplayer could do. Onward, my friend! Justice demands it! Alright, so who we got in the back now? So I could almost see Harley Quinn and the Joker. I feel like I should know you over there. Maybe one of those Doki Doki characters. Not sure what's behind them, though. Alright. The longer I was forced to walk with a bizarre trio, the more my fear and confusion turned back to annoyance. Okay, well that doesn't help. Tella was basically a four-year-old. She would react to everything she saw by getting wide-eyed and pointing to it. The worst part, though, was that I couldn't escape. Every time I tried to move more and more than a few feet in any directions, one of the gynoids would pull me back. No one stopped to help me. To them, it must have looked like part of some cosplay. Tella pointed to a man and woman dressed as the Joker and Harley Quinn. Why are so many of the Earth creatures... Humans. Why are all these Earth humans wearing such varied apparel? Is this what you wear while doing traditional or spiritual activities? I've rolled my eyes. What? No, not really. This is a geek fandom convention. We dressed up in costumes at these based on our favorite shows. What is a show? Is that a religious ceremony of some type? Well, for some people, it is. Anthropology analysis systems rate chance this is a religious holiday at 78%. I arrived at the next piece of evidence that suggested that perhaps Tella might not be from this planet at a door with a normal turning handle. I'm not entirely sure what sentence I just read. <laughs> Tella handled it with less than finesse. For the next full minute, the girl proceeded to try repeatedly to open the door at various hand gestures. Then she tried telling it to open, then she tried hand gestures, then she jumped around in frustration. 
I just stood there dumbfounded. If this was just play acting, then she was awfully good at it. It sure seemed like this woman, who was probably an adult, couldn't open uh, couldn't open a door handle right. Do, do you need help with that? Maybe. I walked over, turned around so I could use my hands, then easily twisted to open the doorknob. Incredible! You're really not from around here, aren't you? I squinted carefully. The more closely I looked at her skin, the less it looked like body paint. Indeed. I am unsure how you came to believe you were being deceived. After all, you had not attempted any disguises or infiltration tactics. Hella leaved, leveled her head upwards and let loose a series of strange clicking sounds from earlier. Was this how her species showed amusement? Are they like bug people? You're also kind of a dork, aren't you? My translator program does not even know what that means. Tell and I continued past the panel hallways towards the entrance to both the game room and the dealer room. After a while, I tried to make another in innocent plea. I was hoping that now that I was more convinced. I was hoping that now that I was more convinced she was actually an alien and had established some sort of rapport. I could get the bindings off. You've told me that someone stole something important from your planet. I assure you that I had nothing to do with it. I've never left Earth. Hmm, I don't know why your machine keeps telling you. I don't know why your machine thing keeps on telling you it was my fault, but I've done nothing wrong. I want to prove it to you however I can. I am a Jessica of Avia, Jacob. If you are genuinely guiltless, then you will be treated mercifully. I'm a defender of truth and the law. What would I do if an innocent was hurt under my watch? You have not been the most cooperative prisoner thus far, but I like you well enough. I hope you are indeed telling the truth and I can release you when the situation is cleared up. Without hurting you, even. Thanks? Now well, that hadn't gotten the cuffs off, but her posture was much less threatening. Progress? We passed by the dealer's room without incident. There only left one major hallway. Sound squawked off the robot's chests. Probably the scanners. Tele tensed. I tense too. We turned the corner to the game room end. Then we ran into a familiar face. Makoto? Ah, good. Maybe things will start to pick up a little now. Jacob? And she, of course, is dressed up as the Dark Phoenix. Which is more evidence that she is a crazy bad lady that we should be very careful with. Thief! Tella reached into her suit and seemingly from nowhere drew a comical looking sci fi weapon. She held it aloft in one hand, glaring sternly at Makoto. For her part, Makoto was still gasping. Return the treasure you stole from my people and surrender at once, you vile deviant! Do that and your cell will be comfortable. She leveled, the gun she leveled the gun towards Makoto. Some people crowded around the scene. From their whispers, perhaps they thought this was some kind of photo shoot or game. Just like my earlier captivity. Oh, I know you as the Justica. Wait, wait, what? Makoto took a step backwards, partially turning away bashfully. Tella kept her toy looking gun steady on her. I guess I'm just going to have to give in and... Okay, she changed her costume. A flash of red light blinded me. I didn't know what was happening. The sounds of weapon firing convinced me to duck. Good plan. Alright, so I guess she's out of her cosplay and I guess, what, that's like her battle costume? Amanda, don't stay there. Move. Get away from these, these people. When the light faded, Makoto had shifted into a strange red latex outfit that clung tightly to the curves of her body. Around us, other people had been watching blinked. A few complained about the light show. 
At least for the moment, I'm more concerned about the strange sci-fi weapon that had suddenly appeared in Makoto's hand. It was aimed at Tella, who had re-sighted her aim back on Makoto. It looks like she's got a whip, though. Is that what you're talking about? They were in a Mexican standoff. There was also one major chain situation, though. Behind me, both robots Tella had been accompanied by were laying on the ground destroyed. Smoke rose from their chests. In the confusion, Makoto had shot them? On the upside, the moment they went down, the cuffs around my wrists clicked open. Perhaps because of the robots they were connected to was destroyed. Aw, you thought just because you found me I'd be easy pickings? That's cute. No wonder it was so easy to get past you the first time. Don't you dare mock me, you villainous cur! I am not a mere ginoid. I am the Justicur of Eva. Eva? Avia? Is that what I've been calling it? If you think you can be dispatched that easily... If you think I can be dispatched that easily, you're mistaken. You're coming home with me. If you resist further, I will bring you... I will bring home your ashes instead. Justicur of Avia. If you don't bring me in, I wonder how long you'll have that title for. Maybe they've already demoted you and you don't know it. Interplanetary communication can be so woefully imprecise, you know. Tell a spat to the side. I crawled near the downed gynoids. With some luck, maybe I could use them for cover. Whatever was going on, I was nearly positive those guns were dangerous. I told you to be silent. Tell fired a warning shot up in the air and then retrained her gun on Makoto. Part of the ceiling burst away in a blaze of who a haze of blue light. A few people pointed and chattered, but most still seemed to think it was a show. A few were even clapping. The dynamic is, is disturbed by the sound of running, someone pushing through the crowd. I looked towards the sound. People in front were parted and a new arrival entered the mix. M Makoto? And Jacob? Amanda put her mouth, her hands to her mouth in shock. I wiggled my cuffed hands and groaned. Can someone please help me over here? Before she can respond, Makoto gave me a wink and interjected. Give me just a second, babe. Tella turned back towards me, probably remembering my existence for the first time since the shooting started. She looked like she'd been slapped. Ah, so you were her accomplice all along. You lied to me. You pretended not to be involved. Your sentence will be incredibly painful, Jacob. What? No. M Makoto, can you tell me what the fuck is going on? Probably not the absolute best time for explanation, sweetie. She was right, of course. A single distraction could give the other girl the advantage. Surprising, though, was neither Tella nor Makoto who made the next move that changed the situation. It was Amanda. I cannot believe I'm doing this. She took a sidelong glance towards me, of all people. Was that fear in her eyes? Alright. Amanda took a step forward and swung her arms in a dramatic circle. Oh boy, where are we going? It almost looked like dancing. It might have been the weirdest thing I'd seen all morning already. Amanda didn't dance. What? As her body moved, strange light appeared from the air, clinging to her. In moments, her entire form was covered in blinding pink light. I hadn't expected this. Tella gasped. Curses, one of Earth's defenders? Here? What a dire turn for this situation. If the lights weren't enough by themselves, Amanda's, Amanda was soon covered in a second wave of throbbing energy. Multi-shaded pink flashes that took the shape of... Hearts? Alright, so we got two aliens and a magical girl. I mean, I, maybe I should have seen this coming. In a sudden burst of moment, movement, Amanda emerged from the pink heart, spreading the light behind her like a halo. But this wasn't an Amanda different from any I'd ever seen in my life. Her short, boyish hair had been converted into a swirling, back-length mass of blonde locks. 
Her Green Lantern cosplay had been totally replaced by a pink baby doll-esque outfit that adorned um, <clears throat> a baby doll-esque outfit adorned with lace and ruffles. She wasn't in her Green Lantern cosplay. And that probably shouldn't say Green Lantern. That should probably say something else like, I don't know, like Green Spotlight or something. Or Emerald Lantern. She was even carrying a sparkling pink scepter. As she emerged from the transformation, Amanda's body moved robotically into a dramatic pose where scepter raised high in the air. It was like she was losing a fight with her own body. As, as far as it sails, love will prevail. At last, the transformation was complete. The light dissipated, save for a halo of random sparkles, and she swept her scepter towards the two combatants. Magical Defender Pink will save the day. It was only at that moment that Amanda seemed to have realized she had an audience. The crowd was watching. I was watching. Makoto and Tella were watching. Her face burned the brightest shade of red I had ever seen anyone's face reach in my entire life. Uh oh. Eep. Her arms flew over her body in a desperate attempt to cover up all of her exposed skin. She was practically crying. This was the approximate limit of my ability to pr process information. Aliens, sure. Why not? Makoto had sci-fi weapons and wears a boner-inducing latex cat suit. She was weird anyways. But this, th this, I've known Amanda for 16 years. Literally the vast majority of my life. And she was some sort of Maho Shoujo. My brain snapped. What the fuck is happening? Jacob, I feel the same way. Makoto also looked pretty shocked by the entire transformation, but recovered a few seconds later. Feeling a little underdressed there, cutie? I didn't know pink was your color. <laughs> it, it, shut up. I've never transformed in public is all. Okay, so... Mm. Tella turned and pointed her laser weapon at Amanda. There's nothing you can do to stop this magical defender. Please leave immediately. This criminal stole one of the three sacred treasures from the secret vault of Avia. She must be punished. Her face softened. It was more a plea than a threat. Amanda still tried to keep her body covered with her left hand, but pointed of her but pointed the tip of her scepter towards Tella. Earth is at our jurisdiction. You don't have the rights to do this. If you make a move to hurt any humans, I, I, I will stop you. She turned to Makoto, though she tried to bury her cheeks in her shoulder to hide the blush. If, if you want me to save your stupid butt from this alien, who you definitely horribly wronged, you should shut your mouth for five seconds, okay? I wasn't able to say a word. I was barely able to keep up with the conversation. It's really silly that you think I need your help with anything. Her grin darkened. Watch this. What? Tella realized a moment too late that her gun had been on the wrong target. Before she could bring it back to focus on Makoto, a series of red blasts rang out from her weapon. Tella dodged, opening fire with her own series of laser strikes. The sudden shock of Makoto's attack won the bout. A red beam struck Tella right in the chest. Ooh, it burned a hole right through her and she fell to the ground with a scream. How do you think they achieved that effect? I don't know, but it was fucking amazing. In the chaos, Amanda rushes over to Tella's side, trailing glittery sparkles with every step. Her hands went searching around, checking for vitals. J Jacob, please help me! That did it. I was still almost paralyzed, but the request was just enough to get me to scramble to her side. Blue alien blood dirty the carpet. Tella was still moving, but clearly fading fast. I looked back for Makoto, but she'd vanished without a trace. It must have been easy in the confusion. You must return me to my ship. She gripped the front of my shirt. Her blood covers it. Even if I die, there is a contingency. What could I do? My brain was racing too fast. 
how would I even do that? Where was her ship? What would happen if I did? Clarity only came when I felt a gloved hand on my shoulder. It was Amanda, and she was shaking almost as much as I was. Do you know which way she came in from? Um, fuck, the front entrance? Got it. With the slightest of ease, she threw the girl, she threw the girl over her shoulder and made a dash for the exit. Within seconds, the two were lost in a sea of people coming to the con. Now I was the only one re remaining. Me and the destroyed Gynoids from... No, wait. The Gynoids had vanished too. How did that happen? Fuck was that? The crowd had already begun to disperse. The show was over. Eventually an employee from the con came over and asked if I was part of their cosplay group. Something about damage to the ceiling. I was only able to stop stuttering long enough to deny it. Fucking fuck. Alright. You know what? I think that's enough. Uh, it's been a little more than an hour. I'm going to save. Uh, truth is, I don't know if I want to keep going. Uh, I'm not really getting into this. Um, can't say that I'm getting too much more interest to keep going. But, you know... If it's a one-off, it's a one-off, but if you guys want me to keep going, let me know. We could at least finish the demo, and if there's enough demand for it, maybe we'll look into the full thing. But as it stands right now, I think this is enough of Cosplay Convention Crisis. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.